Hello, Apple Advantage Finance students. We are now in week three, and I want to let you know I put out in a module a, a screencast-o-matic video that kind of captures my movements in Excel to especially help out with Chapter 5 and a little bit of Chapter 6 with the beta example. So when you read the chapters this week, do read them slowly. Go back and look at the examples in the textbook. Make sure you understand everything. Uh, watch my video that I put out there. Uh, with the explanation to Excel, and that will help a lot with the Chapter 5. Chapter 5 is kind of the meat and potatoes of finance. It's the tools, if you will, that we need to know uh, to help us make better decisions. You know, whether I'm going to buy a new car or not, um, whether I'm going to eventually, we will start talking about net present value, internal rate of return, and all these things. We'll have some additional tools that we'll start to learn in the future, but you know, the, the five basic ones you're going to come down to are payment, number of periods, interest rate, future value, present value. And as long as you know four out of those five values, you can solve for that fifth value. So a lot of this chapter goes through and works different examples and problems, and you'll have homework problems tied to these two. So highly encourage you to kind of watch the video out there in Excel, uh, especially if you haven't um, done some Excel, even if um, you do use Excel. I think it's just easiest to kind of do this work in Excel and upload your homework this way. Uh, but you're welcome to do it by paper too. Just make sure to show how you arrived at your answer when you do the homework problem. So, all right, uh, with that, the other part this week ties to chapter six. It deals with risk. Uh, when you're gonna look at that chapter, you're gonna look at first, uh, kind of going back to your statistics and quantitative analysis classes, the idea of variance, you know, how far away from the average return, say if it's a treasury bill or the stock market, and you look at all those, vari you know, you look at the variance, you have to kind of look at that difference each time for the mean, you find a variance, but of course we gotta take the square root of that variance, get the standard deviation. And, you know, something that like treasury bills are gonna have a very small window uh, differences from the average return, but stocks can have a big uh, variance. And by measuring standard deviation, that tells us a little bit about the risk and how we want to maybe diversify our portfolio to reduce some of that risk. Uh, we can't reduce all of it. There's always going to be what the textbook calls systemic risk, but there's unsystemic, and that's company specific risk. And the idea, you know, with William Sharp, uh, who won a Nobel Prize in uh, economics for this concepts. He first introduced that maybe if you got 18 to 20 stocks in a portfolio, you could diversify the first five away a lot of that company specific risk. Of course, they'd have to be different types of companies. You can't be in the same sector, but um, you just showed the importance, you know, of diversification. And then lastly, um, with beta, beta is a measure not of risk of your stock relative to the market. So if you're, you have a beta 1.5, it says if the market goes up 10%, my stock on average goes up 1.5% in returns on price. And then if the market goes down 10%, then my stock goes down, you know, 15%. So if it's a beta one, it does the exact same. It pretty much follows the market. So if you own any S&P 500 mutual funds in your retirement, all those dots on the line should, on the linear regression line should follow exactly. You know, there's no rocket science to this, you just buying the stocks that are in the S&P 500. It's a great gig because you don't have to put any thought into it. I always thought it'd be great to have an S&P 500 management um, or manage that fund, okay? But other types of funds, they try to beat the market and do better than the market. But most professionals even have a hard time beating the market in the long run. That's something we'll talk about later with the efficient market hypothesis. So uh, I put an example out there too in that um, other video. So kind of walk through and kind of see how they calculated beta. Other than that, just keep plugging along in the forum discussions. You know, we get to week four, we're going to have our first test. Uh, we won't have any forum discussion that week. But otherwise, have a great week. If you have questions, uh, do email me, and I'll try to get back to you that day or the following day. Take care.